Are you tired of repeating validation logic in your controllers? Or struggling with complex validation scenarios? You're in the right place. Welcome to Laravel Champs, where we explore powerful features that streamline your development process, starting with form requests today. For today's video, I have this list of blog articles here, and we can create a new one together. Let's call it Laravel and view maybe. Select the status, let's make it published. It will be about Laravel on the front end. And here we go. It was created and everything is looking good. So when we take now a look at our post store controller, so this is where we're going to store the post. What we're doing here is first we are using a gate to make sure if the user can actually or is allowed to create a post. If not, we're going to return a 403 response. Then we're making some validation here for the title, the status, the tags. So there are a few things that we want to make sure that they are working as expected. And then with the validated data, we're um, passing it to an action order to create the post. And then we're going to redirect to our index page. And then we're going to show a success message and we will see this new post. Perfect. And you've seen it's working. There's nothing really bad, but yeah, you could argue that there is a lot going on in this controller, even though it's an invocable post store controller, just responsible for this one kind of action. But still, we have here some authorization, we have some validating, we have the actually thing that needs to be done, and then we're going to redirect back. So yeah, there is a bit going on, and there is a nice way in Laravel how we can clean this up with a Laravel form request. And we are going to create here a new request, make request, and we're going to call it store post request like that. And you can see it was created on the HTTP request, and there we have our request. Let's take a look at this one and let's see what we got here. So it's a class which is extending the form request class, and we have two methods in here. We have an authorized method, method to make sure we are authorized to do what we want to do in this controller, and then we have a rules method. So here authorized by default is set to false. And then for the rules method, we have an array where we define our validation rules. Okay, so let's start with authorization. So in our case for authorization, we have this check here. So let's get rid of this here. And let's bring this now over to our authorized method. Okay, so what we want to check here is if the user is allowed to create a post. And we can do this. We don't need um, early, early returns here. We're just making sure that the return here in Boolean is the user allowed um, to create a new post. And this will return a Boolean. And we also don't have to return now a 403 response because Laravel will do this automatically for us. And now we have this one place here where the authorization logic is being defined, which is cool. Okay, back here now we have the validation rules. So let's select all of them and let's bring them in here. That's actually enough here. And now we can clean up here our controller a bit. And now what we're going to do in order to make use of the form request, we're going to type hint it here. So it's store post request. We can leave it as request. And now in order to get the validated data, we have a validated method here on the request, which gives us back the validated data if it was working. Okay, so now looking at the controller, it already looks pretty cool here. We have here a request. We are also using our action here. And then we're just making use of our action in order to create the post. And then we're already redirecting um, to a specific route here. So this is now super clean and, and now it's really simple to understand what's going on here. And if you want to know more about how we're going to validate and authorize our request, we need to go to our form request and here we can take a look. Okay, perfect. Let's try this out now. Let's see if it's still working. Let's call this Laravel and Svelte, for example. This will be a published post about Laravel and front end. And it, as you can see, it is still working. We have here our blog post. Okay, pretty cool. So I've shown you already that the form request is pretty cool to yeah, reorganize your code a little bit, make your controller a little bit cleaner. And also a good thing here is 
if you want to use this logic somewhere else. So maybe you want not to create a post only through this form here. Maybe you want to do it for an API, for example, then you probably would use the same request here in order to validate specific data. And then you can just reuse it, which is pretty cool because validation rules are something that you in big application for sure need a couple of times. And then you have this one place that you can reach to. But yeah, that's not it. So there's a lot more that you can do. Since this form request is now a class, of course you can create any other methods here in this class in order to do specific stuff that you need for authorization or for validation. So yeah, this gives you now some space for your custom needs. But it's also something else that I want to show you. So we also have here public after function, which we can call, and we're going to return here an array. So what this is for is we can just add some additional validation logic, which is not just connected to the specific fields. Maybe there's something else connected to this current request, connected to storing a post, which you want to check. So think about this as a way of adding additional validation rules that are not just connected to those given fields that comes through the request. And the way this works is you provide here an array of invocable classes where you do the validation inside the invocable classes. Or what you can also do here is use a closure. So we have a function here which receives the validator. Mm, should be this one here. All right, and inside here we can now define if something else should fail. So let's say here we want to check if the user has already maybe more than one post, and then we don't want him to do any more posts. And we can check this here. So if this user, we have here access to the user and the user has posts. And then if the count is, I don't know, bigger than one, then we want to make it fail as well. And the way we can do this, so we're going to add to the errors of the validator, yeah, similar to that. Let's add it to the idle and let's say you cannot post more than one post here. All right, let's give this a try now. And let's say we create a new one, Laravel and Alpine. Let's make this a published one, Laravel front end, and let's try to create this. And voila, you can see we cannot create more than one post which is currently I've connected it to the title, but you can connect it to any other field. But yeah, this is pretty cool when you think about it because there's often a lot more of validation that you need to do um, in order to say if something is right or not. And you can do this with the after method, which is pretty cool. And again, next to those closures here, you can also provide invocable classes, which if you have multiple ones, makes sense to use those classes here to keep this array clean but this is really cool. And of course, there's much more to form requests, so please make sure to check out the official docs as well. Here we have the after method, after method which we have to use, but you um, can also make sure that you stop on your first failure. You have custom redirect location if you don't want to return just back from where you came from. So there are a few more things that you can do. So please also check out the documentation. But I hope I could show you how you can clean up your code and put authorization and validation into form requests for yeah, cleaner controllers, but also in order to not repeat yourself if you need the same logic somewhere else as well. If you haven't used the form request class before, now's the perfect time to give it a try. If you have any tips or tricks for using form requests, share them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and like for more Laravel Gems. Until next time, happy coding.